And mm-hmm. one of the questions that I got was from someone who had changed their diet, right? Mm-hmm. So they, were, they had success doing keto. And the doctor said that their blood pressure had gone up. But they didn't feel comfortable to tell the doctor that they, they're doing keto. Did doing keto make their blood pressure go up? Now, when it comes to blood pressure, um, <clears throat> a lot of people think about salt. I just released a video a few months ago talking about how your blood pressure is more of a a sugar problem than a salt problem. It is true that if you have carbohydrates attracting water and salt, it will put more volume in your body and that's going to raise your blood pressure. So salt's important. But what they forget in traditional medicine is that if I have, if I eat foods that are high in sugar, that's going to lead to hyperinsulinemia. And hyperinsulinemia leads to sodium retention or salt retention in your kidneys. So even if you restrict salt, if you consume a lot of starchy foods that lead to high insulin, you're still going to end up with high blood pressure. So so the root cause, as you know very well, Violet, is inflammation caused from the wrong diet leading to hyperinsulinemia. And not only are you getting more sodium retention, you're going to have this, you know, endothelial cell dysfunction. And those cells around your art, your vessels should be making nitric oxide. Nitric oxide expands things. So now you're not making that. The inflammation brings all these macrophages in. So you have all this damage that's occurring. And so if we can get to the root cause, this is the cool thing about keto. We actually get rid of salt in that dietary pattern. So now, not only are we not restricting salt, we may have to consume some salt just to balance things out. Mm. So now I can eat fat and salt. My food's going to taste pretty nice. (laughs) And and I'm also able to improve my blood pressure by focusing on sugar instead of salt. So short answer, keto is good for your blood pressure. It's good for your cholesterol. And people who are doing that dietary pattern should not fear that particularly since the American Heart Association, American Diabetes Association, and the Association of Clinical Endocrinology all endorse a lower carb diet, which leads us to keto. So we don't have to... Now, a few years ago, we were outliers. They were like, what's wrong with Violet and Dr. Hampton? What are they saying? This is not good for your heart. But now the large organizations, they can't deny science and the science supports this dietary approach. But the blood pressure going up could be an issue or maybe my interpretation is, it could be that because you're doing keto, but maybe maybe sometimes your numbers are too high, that, so you're not really in a ketogenic state. So you yeah. would still have weight loss, obviously, because you're doing better yeah. than standard American diet because the person says, I had success on keto. So you might, but maybe you just didn't, you're not in keto long enough or for you to yeah. get the full impact. I think so. Um, it is unusual, to be honest, to see a person doing keto and their blood pressure goes up. But but again, it's it's all about what you just said. The first part is, are you doing keto properly? Uh, there are levels to this. Technically, 50 or less is technically um, an opportunity to be in ketosis. But the success rate at that level is only probably in the 60 to 70 percent range in terms of being in true keto everybody's different if i have a a person who's more athletic and doing other stuff they're probably going to have an easier time than others the success rate at 20 is near a hundred percent if you're following like if you go to a dr eric westman at duke who does research it's nearly a hundred percent success rate if you're less than 20. That's why a lot of clinicians tend to lean towards that number when they're doing therapeutic carb restriction, which is like prescription dose uh, keto, right? So I would, to heal, so I mentioned the blood vessels and nitric oxide. In order for those endothelial cells to heal after years of eating a diet that causes inflammation, it sometimes takes time. So I would give it more time and I would make sure that number is low. Uh, in terms of total carbs, and it's very unlikely that that's going to um, uh, not yield success. Having said that, I have a NEST acronym, nutrition, exercise, less stress, more sleep, how we think, recovering from trauma as the NEST. Maybe you need to also look at those other aspects of your life, which is why I think broader. So maybe I need to start adding the 
optimizing of my sleep to the equation. Because if I don't get enough sleep, as an example, when you look at research, you get you get like four or five hours of sleep, your next day, your for 12 hours, your pressure is going to be higher. If you just in, the next day, so if you're going to see your doctor, if you're going to see Dr. Hamm, <laughs> make sure you get enough sleep because your pressure is going to probably be higher. So, so you want to start looking at those other things. And when you're making dietary changes, there's stress. Your body's under stress because it's not accustomed to you going in a completely different direction. Our body likes to be, you know, they, it likes homostasis. It likes things to be where they are. So when you start changing, that's a stressor to your body, even though it's a good stressor. But usually once the dust settles, everything settles down and you can do much better after that. 